Hey, welcome back. So in the last video, we looked at a graphical method for finding the activation energy and the pre-exponential factor. And we saw that if we plot the natural logarithm of the rate constant versus one over temperature, we get a straight line graph whose slope is equal to minus the activation energy over R. So we just multiply the slope by minus R to get the activation energy and whose Y intercept is the natural logarithm of A. And if you've got lots of data points, right? So in the last graph, we had something on the order of like uh, 10 or 15 data points. You can use a spreadsheet and you get some very nice values for your activation energy and your value of A. But what happens if you've only got two measurements? So there's actually a really terrible way um, that unfortunately is really common. So I'll go ahead and show it to you, but I think it's really terrible. There's a really terrible two-point method for finding those two things, the pre-exponential factor and the activation energy. And so it takes a little bit of math, uh, but here we go. So we saw earlier that K is equal to A times E to the minus EA over RT. That's the Arrhenius equation. We saw that we can take logarithms of it and change it to log K is equal to minus EA over R times one over T plus the natural logarithm of A. And if you're not sure how, go back a couple of videos or just go ahead and try and do it yourself and rearrange. Make sure you remember properties of logs. Logs of A times by B, right, is log of A plus the natural log of B. And remember that when we take the log of the anti-log, so we just get back to where we started, which is X. So E to the power of and log, those are anti to each other. All right, so that is hunky-dory. So what we're gonna do is a two-point method, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say, if we take a particular temperature, uh, we'll call it T2, and we measure the rate constant of that temperature, K2, and we do the exact same thing at a temperature we'll call T1. So I'm just gonna exactly copy down this equation. So one over T plus the natural logarithm of A, and I'm gonna write little ones here, and here we can now solve for the activation energy and the pre-exponential factor from these two equations. And again, we normally assume that the pre-exponential factor doesn't change with temperature. It's a little bit naughty. The molecules do collide a little more effectively as you change the temperature. But we normally see that this is a quite a small effect to the exponential effect. The activation energy, as far as I know, is not affected by the temperature. It's a minimum energy the molecules have to collide with to react. And changing the temperature doesn't change that minimum energy. So how do I solve for Ea and the natural log of A? So there's a couple of different ways to do it. So uh, the simplest way is just to take these two equations and subtract one from the other. And so now the left-hand side becomes the log of K2 minus the log of K1, and the right-hand side becomes minus Ea over R, and actually I'm just gonna factor out here, one over T2 minus one over T1. Can do a couple of other things here. One is that the log of one thing minus the log of another thing, so log of A minus log of B is actually the same thing as log A over B. So I can rewrite the left-hand side as the log of K2 over K1, and the right-hand side then is just minus Ea over R, one over T2 minus one over T1. So it's kind of a clumsy expression here, but uh, we've now reduced it to something that we can use to find the activation energy. And if we want to rearrange this equation, it's kind of ugly, but if we want to just find the activation energy, then uh, let's see, we can multiply both sides by minus R, so it's minus R times by the log of K2 over K1, and then while we're doing that, we can divide by that ratio of temperature. So we divide by one over T2 minus one over T1. And at this point here, we're just left with this all by itself. So we multiply by R, whoops, sorry, multiply by R to push it over there. Uh, the minus push it over here. This term here, we push it under here. And then we're left with just the activation energy by itself. So this allows us to solve for the activation energy. This video is getting a little bit long, so we'll go ahead and move to another video and we'll look at an example where we can take two different rate constants and two different temperatures and we can solve for the activation energy. Now, we can also solve for the pre-exponential factor and honestly, the easiest way to do it is once you find the activation energy, then you just take a rate constant and you take the activation energy and you take the temperature and you just rearrange and you solve for A. So I won't show you how to do it, but uh, once you've got the activation energy, you can substitute back into any one of these equations and just solve for the pre-exponential factor. All right, so uh, skip on and uh, join me in the next video and we'll see how we can take some cool data and we can find an activation energy. All right.